Hello and welcome to Sport for Business. It's a great pleasure this morning to be able to welcome TJ Reid, a hurler of legendary proportions and legendary skills to the show. A very good morning to you, TJ. We're here today to talk about a brand new series from AIB. It's the toughest summer and it has been that. Um, before we get into talking about you from a hurling perspective, which is what we mostly know you from, you opened up your own gym, your own business uh, recently as well. How has that been in terms of having to deal with the kind of, uh, you know, the kind of impact that you could never have imagined in any of your business plans? Yeah, um, yeah, I suppose myself and my business partner, Richard Connolly, um, obviously it was good to have somebody on your shoulder um obviously like leaning on his shoulder he leaning on my shoulder during this pandemic so you know it wasn't an easy decision to cl close the close the gym and obviously it was great you know obviously it would have been a tough decision to do it on your own so when you have somebody beside you it makes things an awful lot easier and you, you have a, a two people together you know making that decision um together um but you know, we opened um, the gym facility in Kilkenny three years ago. Uh, we, we made a decision to go into business together. Great journey. Learned a lot. Hard work, you know, probably 12, 16 hours a day. Um, building the business. Um, creating a, the best service we could possibly for Kilkenny. Um, employing the staff. Um, and playing personal trainers um so you know and we, we were building every year we were building we were building recently before the pandemic we were adding on an extra three thousand square feet onto the business because we were doing we were, we were doing quite well and you know each month we have targets to hit in terms of membership growth and in march we actually we had a target and we, 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 we hit that target in March and we had a little team celebration here in the gym facility and and we had pizza, you know, celebrating that milestone together. And then it was two two weeks later then, obviously obviously with the COVID, um it was been in people's years since January, February, and then it was building, building, building. And then all of a sudden, then businesses were closing. You know, you were seeing it on, on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, I made a decision to close the, uh, their business to, to save people's lives. And, you know, we were seeing this going on. And um, it, was the, it was the 13th of March um, where we decided to, um, to close. And we are going to be celebrating our three years in business in April as well. Um, so you know, you know we were planning a flat with a big, um, a big charity a day. Um, they organised to celebrate um, our birthday, um, and then you know that was um, cancelled as well. So you know it, it was tough because when you put your heart and soul into something and building your members and constant, constantly uh, look, looking at membership growth. You know, if if we don't have members, unfortunately, our, our business doesn't work. And um, to close the doors on them, um, it was tough. And um, because it's still, after that, then you now we thought it was maybe three weeks, four weeks. Uh, we closed for four weeks, and we we get back going again. But like like all businesses around, it was three three months, and and so it was a tough tough decision. But um, obviously, the the right decision at the time. And, and did you find that you were dealing in a teamwork environment, which you'd be used to, obviously, from the hurling, but with your banks and your landlord and the various different elements that go into a business? How did you, how did you find that in terms of your own personal approach to, to facing into something which everybody was sharing at a particular point, but you were feeling this, obviously, in a very personal way? Yeah, look, um... I think when something like this happens, um, you'd be very surprised of the amount of support support you get, the amount of help that's, that's out there, and people were very willing to 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 help you. 
Um, so yeah, look, um, we you know we had to you know um, call in um, make all the calls in terms of the banks and landlords, um, other um, direct debits that are going out as well to put them all on pause. Um, so yeah, look, I and mean, it was tough. On on you know, we're coming from a business background. We are ringing other businesses to um, to 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 pause our, our, our direct debits on on hygiene and stuff, or or and and obviously with gas and electricity um, bills as well and, and whatnot. So it was very much, you know, a very stressful time on on everyone. And we are ringing people there, telling telling us stories about the impact is after um, is after. Um, happening on their business we are telling stories about our impact so it was very much everyone coming together and everyone I suppose trying to stay positive as well and look we'll, we'll get through this it'll be it'll be you know it'll be um, a couple of weeks couple of months and we'll get through it together um, so it it was um, it was the unknown and you know but very much people were, were there to help and you probably remember from the stresses and strains of setting it up in the first place that you would have always had that release of being able to go down the field to go to Ballyhale or to join up with a, a Kilkenny session to let off a bit of steam to get into something that means you can escape out of your own mind you didn't have that this time around as well how big of a how big of a loss was that to somebody who has been playing since the age of four years old yeah um, yeah, it, it, it was it was tough. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, I always tell people to, have to pick up something that you have a distraction. And obviously, from work or from whatever business you're in, it's always good to have a distraction or a place where you can go and forget about whatever work, family issues or whatnot. And that's why a, a gym is, is, is so important to people because, you know, I'm dealing with people... Um, they don't play sport, um, they don't play GA. Um, their hobby is going to the gym after work or even before work. That's their, that's their release. Um, so, and I, I understand that because I always tell people it's always good to have a distraction, a hobby. But it was great for me. Um, I'm, I'm at home living on my family farm and um, I have a few pedigree limousines at home on the farm. So that was my escape goat. Um, that's where I, I, I turn my, my attention to and I can focus my en energy um, on the farm and to help out my father and brother on the farm as well. So, you know, it was, and it was a great release. And, and obviously, we kept the business going. We, we had to adapt to online, um, online classes. Um, so that very much um, kept the kind of routine and the structure. And obviously, when you're involved in business and sport, you like to have goals and you like to have a daily structure. So that kept me sane for the three months. So um, like I was logging on doing two or three classes a day on live uh, to, to keep that, that connectivity um, between, um, between TG Reset and Fitness and our members out there. But we also picked up non-members who are joining the classes. You know, I have people from Cork logging on, um, Tipperary, Limerick, Galway logging on. Um, so... And you know, we built up that again when you're on Zoom, you build up that friendship and, and that connection through Zoom as well. So it was a great experience, to be honest. Um, so it was. Um, it was. It was. You know, it kept me sane. Um, so it did. So obviously, when I hadn't the sport, I had the, I had Zoom live classes as the, to, to keep me focused and, and to keep my head occupied. And you've been raising the skill levels of kids in all of those counties as well. I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that you'll want to keep that a secret from anybody else back down there in, in Kilkenny. Um, you're back now in with the, the club environment, are you? Back back in training with the uh, with the seniors in Ballyhale. Yeah, we are indeed. Um, uh, you've got a you've got an AIB All Ireland Club Championship to defend this year. Um, if uh, if if we get the the schedule sorted out and it. And it gets underway, but um, but Kilkenny to win first, and that's always going to be pretty tough. Yeah, for sure. Look, it's you know when I was doing my own individual training, um, you know you're getting up early mornings, doing your five k, ten k runs, and you're doing your home workouts. You know, getting in your stretch and um, getting in your core sessions. 
you know, the first two weeks it was it was grand, you know, it was easy. But then after that, then you know, the the, the mental strength started to wear. You started to say to yourself, you know, what am I doing this for? You know, and for me, I like having goals and I like having the target to okay, championships in eight weeks. This is what I'm doing. But that was gone. That was non-existent. So you're just training for the sake of training, and that that monogamous came into it, and 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 you're just as I said, just going through the motions. And at times your training sessions mightn't have been fantastic because you know when you're when you're so used to training in a group environment, you always have you'll always be pushing yourself because you have teammates around you. But then when you're on your own, then it's very easy to you know, to slacken off or the last minute of your run, it's very easy to, to drop your standards. Um, so that's why I found that the hardest was 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 when you're so used to a group environment to go train doing your own individual programs was, was very hard. But um but yeah, we're back we're bang now and clubs are back in action. Great to see all the pictures up on Twitter um with games and, and people and spectators up in trees and walls. So, you know, it's great to see and it's encouraging to, to see it, that people want to go and look at games. Unfortunately, um, we, we, we have a limit on the capacity to have as well, um, which is tough. Um, but for me, just to, be, just to get back down to our local GA field on a Tuesday and Thursday and a Sunday, it's, um, it's, it's fantastic. Great. And the, uh, sure the games will be coming at us thick and fast now. The other thing that you've been doing in the in the course of this lockdown is is getting ready, working with Ross Whitaker on this movie, this webisode of of yours, and then feeding into a larger documentary as well. How did you find that experience of of working in an environment where you were being told exactly what to do and where to go and how to stand, as opposed to the more sort of fluid of you know fluid relationship you'd have on a sporting field? Yeah, look, um, it, it's not an environment um, I, I, I like, um, but but yeah, look, um, it, it is for a great documentary um, for myself to be involved in it. I just saw a clip of it. Um, you know, it, it gave me a small bit of emotion seeing all the kids. You know, there's I, as I said, I spent three months training kids all over Ireland and all over the world tuned in and. You know, to see the, the kids um, chatting um, to Ross on the documentary gave me a small bit of goosebumps because, you know, that was, um, you know, I was very much, um, I suppose, touched to see the response that I got from all the um, teens and all the parents around Ireland and the support I got, the letters I received in, in the posts, um, presents I got received um, as well, and parents calling by the gym were popping in with the kids getting getting photos and dropping in cakes and and cards so to look back on to see see that clip um was very much um very touched and very humbled over it, that look this is what i done to um to get to get kids through this pandemic and i think 2020 will always be remembered and it'll be remembered for the toughest um but for me I can always look back and I, 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 I've, I've taught um, the kids um, P and skills for 2020. Won't it be great in 10 or 12 years' time if one of those kids is lining out in Crow Park for a, a hurling or a camogie final and, uh, and we're able to look back on that clip and if they're yeah. playing against Kilkenny, they'll be able to blame you. But <laughs> Yeah, that's what I said. You know, um, I was doing a send-off. Um, it was the P and GA All-Ireland final day and. Um, I was togged out with Kenny jersey and shorts and togs and Ibrahim Joey Hall and then Parik Welch and that's what I said at the end that you know wouldn't this be be great to 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 see uh, get a message from one of the parents saying my little Johnny is is togging out in Crow Park today for his first minor game or first senior game and and he he purchased he purchased your your PE and GA jersey um to to remember the time that we we had together so that's why i said so yeah it, it would be um fantastic in 10 years to see a young kid or a young girl going up and re representing their county and playing in pro bar well those days of the big games will be back with us um 
if not sooner, then hopefully in the fullness of time. But for the moment, uh, well done on getting through this toughest summer. Congratulations on the making of the, the video. Uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing that in online channels as well as on RTE towards the end of August. But for now, TJ Reid, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rob.